And welcome back to the Adam Ro- to um the Blue Oasis podcast. Uh, almost got that wrong. With me today is Robert Brill. Robert, how are you doing? Adam, good to meet you. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, 20 years in advertising. Last 10 years, I've been growing Brill Media. And we're an advertising firm. We we specialize in media buying, serving up ads, using data targeting and technology across search, social display, connected TV, digital out of home, etc. Fantastic. So, how did your journey to uh, advertising and marketing begin? You know, I I got my first agency job two weeks out of college. Um, prior to that, I was working at Universal Music doing what we would characterize today as social marketing, but it was at the time um, guerrilla marketing in forums, etc. Um, so I spent about 10 years working at a few different agencies. My very first job was a, an assistant digital media buyer or planner um, on Sony Pictures and um, worked on some cool movies. There was a movie in 2004 five maybe called when a stranger calls which we did some really cool stuff for and um yeah uh by 2010 2011 um digital advertising became much more focused on data and automation and i was um in a really good position to take leadership roles in in that world and then 2013 i started brill media with the goal of making that targeting and automation available to small businesses or mid-sized businesses, you know, companies not spending hundreds of millions of dollars a year in advertising. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I credit, I credit my love for the advertising business to a few things, including the boss I had at the time, his name is Elias Plishner. He's now, um, I don't know his title. His title has many words in it, including the word global at Sony Pictures. Um, so uh, very talented and he cultivated um, a really great team. And I, I really enjoyed my time at Universal McCann working on Sony Pictures. That's incredible. I mean, so you were 22 years old, um, two weeks out of college. Yeah, two weeks out of college. And I knew it was a job for me because, um, you know, you can imagine broke out of college. Um, the job wasn't paying too much, but one of the best things about the job is First two months in the job, we went to Spago twice on uh, rep lunches, you know, to learn about, you know, I, you know, I don't remember who it was. It could have been like Fandango or uh, Yahoo or, you know, Wall Street Journal or someone uh, trying to tell us, you know, their advertising capabilities and uh, o- over dinner or lunch, I should say, at Spago. I was like, all right, the, if I'm going to get paid in good food, this is the job for me. And... And that's why we work too, is for good food and and everything, and, yeah. or just being able to pay for good food, um, because good food, a good diet, uh, and you live a long time. And you know, yeah. you know, it's like you know, one of the things is yes, I wouldn't have been able to afford all those fans, and we got we went to the finest restaurants in Los Angeles for like three years. It was great, but it's not even about. A little bit is about the money, right? You can't afford to do those things on your own, especially as a kid out of college. But it's the other part of it is just knowing that those places exist and making it accessible and feeling comfortable and kind of like really fancy environments. It's it's sort of like, you know, what you know, I, I lived in New York for a little bit, and I think New York's such a great place for advertising and in general, such a robust, dynamic, energetic city. And it's one of those things where I wanted to feel comfortable in those environments. And even though I wasn't getting paid much, I was I was getting paid in in so much learning and experience that um, it was great. It was like, you know, we called it our MBA. You know, not at that time, not, none of us had gone to get our MBA. And, and, I, and I never went to get my MBA, but my colleagues, they were all from really nice universities like USC, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara. And I was the, the one guy from a Cal state school. Right. So I felt like, all right, I've already leveled up because of the environment that I'm in the, the, the caliber of, of professional, you know, the, one of the ladies that I worked with uh, who, who I think started the exact same day as me, 
was the president of the Students Association at USC like the year before. And I was just a guy trying to get through college. Like it's such a dramatic difference. Um, so I, I just felt really fortunate to be able to be included in such a really um, high caliber group of professionals. So we got our MBA. They went on, all these people went on to get their MBAs. Like, like probably f I can probably mention four or five names right now that all went in to get their MBA and and that again speaks to the the caliber of these people. I never got my MBA, um, but we called it our our professional MBA working there for a couple of years. That's great. Uh, so when did you exactly uh, open or start Brill Media? Uh, 2013, when I had been in the business for 10 years. 2013? I was in college during that time. So yeah, yeah I'm feel, I feel old. So, and with, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and did you do the same things as, um, you had been doing previously or did you deviate a bit? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. You know, there's, when you know something deeply, like I, I, I had a really strong understanding of the advertising business. What I, what I understood was the practitioner work of how to kind of like get the work done. Um, what I hadn't had experience with uh, or success with is sales. Um, there's a little bit of, of looking at the, the numbers, but you know, it's a different story when it's your numbers and your money. Um, so when you know something so well, you see the really good and the really bad. And I actually try to start a business in a different, like in sort of like slightly different fields. Like I tried influencer marketing, didn't work. I tried to be an influencer that didn't work because like it, the barriers to entry are very low. So, you know, a lot, there are a lot more talented people who can do that type of work than, than me. I'm a numbers and data guy. So, so that didn't work. I did, um, I set it up as a consulting firm, but I had no experience being a consultant. Um, and as a result, like I couldn't really answer the, the basic questions of what's the benefit of hiring a consultant? <laughs> but I didn't have that. I didn't, you know, I just didn't have the experience. So I tried to avoid the thing that I knew the best because I also knew the, the, the big sort of challenges in that business. And so eventually by, I had to accept the, the only way around, there's no way around. There's only the way through. So I had to figure out how to sell I had to figure out how to deal with the financial risk, right? Because when you're spending advertising budget, if you get $100,000 in advertising, there's a lot of companies who will only pay you the the cost of that contract after the money's been spent. So it's okay, like, I don't have $100,000 to float on advertising costs. Like, well, how do I deal with that? But at some point, I just realized I have to go through it. That's the only way to succeed. So I learned how to sell more or less. I learned how to deal with the financial risk and deal with the, the flow of cash. And um, in the end, the thing that, that makes us successful is us doing the work that, you know, we've been experts on and that I've been working on for many years. Fantastic. So let's see here. Um, So you learned about uh, ad copy, um, or you had skills prior going into uh, building your business with ad copy. Um, so what lessons did you? Um, so I guess what lessons did you learn when you were really starting out with your own business, and yeah. when, and when did it just click that it was going to work? Yeah. So. I'll answer the last question first. Like, I, it's funny because I would tell my wife all the time, like, oh man, maybe now I have a real business. But that that was like after I had five employees. <laughs> like it, like one employee, I don't have a real business. Two employees don't have a real business. Three, four, five, it was like around five that I was like, oh, maybe I have a real business. But what, what I was actually stressing or fretting about was all the things that come with owning a business. And the big thing about owning a business or having a business or running a business, even if you're not the owner, is 
predictable, repeatable, and scalable growth. And our business was formed off of tons of relationships, which is great. I mean, people trust me, they know me, they like me, and they want to work with me. But I can't manufacture those deep trust relationships. I can't like run ads through that. So I had to find a way to reconcile the fact that those like platinum relationships that are so valuable, I, I will need to find another steady stream of opportunities outside of that. And that took a while, but you know, starting the business, there's a few lessons I had. Number one, focus, like do the thing that's in your zone of genius. No matter how hard it is, do the thing that's in your zone of genius. Like, like in my experience, everyone can be an influencer if they want to be, they can get lucky or they can just know how to talk or, you know, whatever. Anyone can be an influencer if they try hard enough. So I'm not going to compete in that world because I'm, you know, I'm not the most, um, uh, you know, I'm a business guy. At the end of the day, I just realized this. <laughs> it sounds so silly. I just realized this. I've been in business for 20 years. I used to think of myself as an ad guy, but I'm actually a business guy. I enjoy business um, through the lens of advertising, but I've enjoyed business. So, uh, so, so I'm a business guy. It's hard to be, I'm not as interesting as a, as a person that does other types of uh, content creation. So number one, focus on your zone of genius. Number two, mindset is everything. The reason mindset is everything is because things will be difficult. And the question is, it's not the, the circumstances that you find yourself in. It's how you respond to the circumstances that you find yourself in that makes the difference between success and failure. And of course you want to, you want to prime the world to give you the best possible experiences. You want to be prepared on how to um, to how to achieve things. You want to learn from experts. You want to have money in the bank. You want to have a strategy. All those things. At the end of the day, circumstances will happen. It's how you respond to the circumstances that determine your fate. So the way you get through the down times is by is by having the right mindset, understanding that it's part of the journey. Uh, being able to take risks, dealing with fear effectively, you know, those types of things. Uh, finding good partners, good individuals who can advise you, people who are smarter than you, those types of things. Um, and then, and, and that got us to a point where we can grow our business. The, the next part of it was relationships, like, the you know, um, advertising is a really relationship focused business because for, for a few reasons, number one, uh, there's so many different advertising agencies, like literally anyone also low barriers of entry, anyone with a computer, an internet connection and a Facebook account can sell you Facebook ads, but they don't have experience. I don't have the 20 years of experience that I have and my team has uh, individually doing this work. So anyone can take a course or a certificate. And I'm not talking about a certificate that you get from college, like a two-year degree. I'm talking about like, you know, a, a one or two week or an eight week course online. Like it's hard for a lot of business owners, it's hard to differentiate between someone who can actually grow your business and someone who has, who is kind of like not so good at their work or in the worst case, actually disingenuous and has bad intentions. So the, the, you know, the, the challenge is that there's so many different people doing this work. We have to find ways to, you know, become better and stand out. And that goes back to the mindset, right? It's the idea that like, okay, now I need to evolve our business. Now I need credibility markers, you know? So the, ne the next sort of lesson is have a strategy and have an imagination. The strategy component is understand where you want to end up. Like, what does the future look like for you? What's the, how, how do you live your life? How do you exist? It's sort of like when you travel, like if I'm flying from Los Angeles, if I'm going from Los Angeles to New York, like number one, I know my destination. Number two, I can decide if I want to take the train, which not many people do. If, if I can drive, not many people do. So I'm going to fly. And then I can decide what time I fly. All those tactical decisions along the way are driven off of a strategy to get to New York. It's the same with your business. Know where you're going to end up and then work backwards to define the actions you're going to take to go from where you are today to where you want to be in that future. So 
And that allowed me along the way to understand when opportunities were knocking on my door. So for example, um, you know, I, I, I understood that I needed credibility logos. I literally needed people to see that we were featured in big publications in some capacity. So I was like, all right, I don't want to pay PR people thousands of dollars a month. I don't have the money for that, but I need those logos. I need that credibility. And lo and behold, two months later, I got an invitation from Forbes to be part of um, like a paid membership community with other entrepreneurs. And one of the things is you could write in Forbes. So, so I regularly have the ability to write in Forbes whenever I want. And I answer um, roundup questions. You know, they'll ask a bunch of people and you'll get published. So I'm routinely published in Forbes. And that's a great credibility marker for anyone that wants to work with us because they know there's some element of this that says like Forbes, I'm allowed to write in Forbes. So there's value there. So I think it's, you know, the lesson once you get into kind of like into the, into your business, once it's starting to grow is have a strategy, reevaluate your strategy and look for opportunities. When I started this business, you know, I'm 10 years into this journey. I'm constantly refining what I'm trying to actually accomplish here. Like I started the business because I want to continue to work in advertising. I like the work and I want to make the money that I wanted to make. I felt like I wasn't be, I, I, I realized at some point in 10 years into the business, I was like, Oh, I'm becoming a bad employee. I'm bad. Like I'm bad at doing like, I'm a bad employee. Just we'll leave it there. And being a bad employee, I was like, all right, it's going to be hard for me to be find success at another company, especially because I wanted leadership. But then I got that. I had a job. I had a job in advertising. My business remained. And having the job in advertising, I was like, okay, now I want to grow a company. I don't want to do the day-to-day -day work. I want to grow a company. Goals changed. That allowed me to become the CEO. And what ultimately this all wraps into is this idea of freedom. The reason I'm in this business is freedom. I want the freedom and I want other business owners to have the freedom that I have. Anyone who wants it, I want you to be able to grab it for yourself. The freedom for me was I could I could work in any way I want. And I chose not to drop not to have an office because I don't want to deal with traffic. It's also expensive, but I also don't want to deal with traffic. Like that was my 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 one of my drives was like an hour and a half each way. I was like, this is horrible. So I, I want to work in environments that make me feel comfortable because it allows me to see succeed the best when I'm in this environment. And when I'm in this box, I feel the best. Of course. So at the end of the day, um, the success comes from knowing what you want and making it happen and finding other people who are miles ahead of you, paying them for your exp for their expertise so that you can you can be aggressive and go after the things you want. An example of that, and I'll stop talking after this. An example of that is I've been trying to figure out search engine optimization for our business for like five years now. Literally, I've been tinkering. I you know like I, I'll read it a little bit. I don't know SEO, and I don't really have that much time to focus on it. I found this really smart person who does SEO. His name is Edward Sturm. Pay him a few thousand dollars. Five years, and in a few hours, I figured out SEO at least enough to give me a year's worth of work to make SEO work for my business. And I'm already ranking on, on new pages that I've created because he gave me a framework. He told me what to do, and I'm getting the job done. It, That's incredible. what happens with every expert. You pay them so that you don't spend many hours, months, or years flailing around doing the wrong thing. You don't spend many tens of thousands of dollars doing the wrong thing. You pay the expert. They give you the framework. You do the work yourself if you want to be doing the work yourself. Of course. Ugh. After, um, so I have definitely um, learned a lot just from YouTube as well. And when yeah. people get started um, with their journey at first, I mean, my encouragement uh, and my mentor's encouragement is, you know, don't quit your day job until you have a sustainable business, which is why you should get something going. And especially something that's 
mobile too. I mean, uh, you can pick up your business at this point because you're on Teams. You've got Skype. You've yeah. got everything. Uh, you got have all your equipment you would need for to advertise. Essentially, you've got your systems all on your laptops, and and you're good to go now. And you create the life you want to create. That's to me, that's to me being rich. You live the way you want to live, doing the work you want to be doing. If you want to be working with like Wi-Fi on a beach, you do that. I don't want to do that because I like, I like, I have a family. We have roots here in Los Angeles. I like this environment. I get, I'm very productive in here. But if you want to live on the beach from Bali, work in that's an opportunity for you. There are options. Of course. Of course. Um, going back to your um, comment on experts, um, you don't always have to pay thousands of dollars. I've actually figured out how to get my audiobooks um, all from YouTube tutorials, you know, on Findaway Voices, just without, you know, with not, without paying it, Anyone and I've made a couple hundred dollars from selling, you know, nearly 500 audiobooks too. And nice. some of those were rentals and some of those were actual retail. But, you know, you know, the information is out there. And, and if you're willing to dig through all of the garbage, you're going to find it. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, there are absolutely opportunities there. There's a wealth of knowledge on X, on YouTube, on TikTok. I learned how to build a chat bot by in starting with one person on TikTok. And then I dig, dug in, I learned to build a chat bot. Um, I just, I actually just joined TikTok the other day and just posted something on hockey. And, and I have to just say that like 160 views and I didn't do anything. I didn't contact anyone. I didn't tell, I told one person that I just joined TikTok. I, I didn't even send them the TikTok and somehow I get 160 views and which is odd yep. to me because it's like, how did that happen too? And, and, you know, also getting your feet wet early is always the better thing to do in any market or just learning or just honing your skills at an early age. 100%. I mean, it's, I think, I think the challenge for people is that there's so many things. Like if you start tinkering with everything you're interested in, it, there's so many things. Like, and I think what one one relevant point here is the nature of curiosity is going to be very helpful. The people who are naturally curious and naturally tinkerers, they're the ones, and I th I consider myself to be part of that group. We're the ones who have early opportunities. Like, it's crazy. I heard about Bitcoin in like 2010, 2011, and I didn't buy. It. And I'm so, you know, I wouldn't change any, a single thing about my life right now because I have a beautiful family and a beautiful child. But before that, I was like, man, I wish I kind of like took that risk and bought some Bitcoin. But what I've learned is like, you really have to dedicate time and effort to tinkering. And that's how you figure things out before before other people do. Of course, of course. Uh, going back to your uh, advertisement agency, what is the typical client you uh, get, and um, and what does he want, he or she want to be uh, advertised for? Yeah, so um, most of our clients are actually other agencies, so agencies that do creative work or strategy or social media, they'll work with us. And that we'll run the ad buying for them. So like we open movies, we sell collagen, we do a whole slew. We help states ensure their people don't get tuberculosis. Like there's a whole slew of things that we do that are like very diversified. But the end advertise, and, and sometimes we work with the, the direct advertiser as well. Um, and we're doing things like we're doing some home campaigns right now. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of versatility. Like an advertiser that has fifteen hundred dollars a month, we can work with, and we can work with clients that have five hundred thousand dollars a month to spend. And at the end of the day, the the nature of success here is defining a strategy, and then activating that strategy 
such that you get actual business growth. You don't you don't need likes, comments, and shares. You need like money, and you need to keep your accounting team busy. And and personally, I would take you know ten million dollars over ten million YouTube subscribers. I mean, I mean, would ten million would part of that ten million YouTube subscribers buy you know get on my Substack or buy my audiobooks? You know, probably a good portion of them would, but um, ten million dollars is you know you basically can retire in this country at that point. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and. But so I'll tell you, like, if you have 10 million, if a, a, a person or a, an organization that has 10 million subscribers on YouTube indicates that they figured out predictable, repeatable, and scalable business growth. It, it all, it all routes back to the same thing. Like it doesn't matter the type of business you're in. You need all, you need pr that predictable business growth. Of course, of course. Um, typical clients, um, email lists and sign up lists. Mm -hmm. You, uh, your agency has that, uh, or yeah, of course. Um, so what's your opt in item? So in the past we've, we've done campaigns with lead magnets where we, um, give away guides. Um, but it didn't, work for us as effectively as I would have liked. Cause again, I'm not looking at signups. I'm looking at money in the bank, money coming in, flowing revenue. So we're actually putting all that stuff out on the, on the web for free to benefit our SEO. So like in 2020, we, um, we put together a recession marketing guide and just in 2023, we updated it with kind of like more contemporary information uh, effects of of the pandemic uh, on businesses. We updated our business case studies. Um, so on our website, we have a recession. I think it. I'm trying to. Remember, it's probably just recession marketing guide. Brill Media slash recession marketing guide with dashes in there. And uh, it's 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 a full on thing that's available there that um, anyone can read, and I think is going to benefit our SEO tremendously. And, and that's what, and, um, for opting in for opt-ins and, uh, free PDF guides, I mean, that's how you grow your list. Um, and you put, you put your videos out on social media and you say, Hey, you know, here's this thing. And, and maybe as a part of the video, you just show off, you know, how you get there and then you leave the guide there. And then it's like, okay. And then and you can stay up to date here and here's, and I'll send you more tips along the way 100%. and be a part of the newsletter and how to yeah, grow I mean, and all that stuff. And that's, that's how, um, you know, that's how I did it. That's how a bunch of, a lot of people did. And even though I've only have less than 200 people on, you know, my lists, it's, it's, um, you know, it's better than most and, uh, getting and, you know, you still have to keep that optimism um, a part of it too. Hundred percent. It's. I mean, look, an email list is a good way to grow your personal brand, to gather attention. Um, you know, people need to know that you do something before they'll buy from you. So it's a it's a good strategy. Um. Yeah. Uh. Social. Social media. Do. Is there any specific format you prefer? YouTube, TikTok. Uh, and what's the best for getting eyeballs on uh, your brand? Yeah, so we're big advocates for Meta. Um, just and let me be clear here: we're we're media agnostic, meaning like the only reason we talk about Meta is because it works. If it didn't work, we don't talk about it. Um, so the thing about Meta is it's it's a, an exceptionally powerful algorithm, and because it's so powerful, it can it can accomplish a lot of different things for campaigns. Um, to get eyeballs, I definitely focus on meta. Um, although there are some capabilities on, on X on Twitter that oh, like, we're getting very low CPMs on some video ads. Like we're getting 30, 40 cent CPMs on video ads on TikTok right now. So it's a very general mass awareness opportunity. Um, a lot of what we do on meta specifically is about generating leads and sales. The goal is do things that are going to be 
that are going to get money in the door or get close to get money money in the door. And we do um, we have a creative testing framework that allows us to understand which creative executions are the most interesting to customers. And by doing that, we get the most out of our advertising spend. Like you don't on on Meta, you don't want to run ads with like suboptimal ad creative. Like if it's bad creative, you're kind of like wasting your money. So we have a system in place to understand which creative is the most interesting so that we spend most of our money on that execution. Of course, of course. Um, I'm still trying to think of something something else. Um, so um, for someone who's totally new, just starting out, um, you would say just start the process and but don't go in blindfolded, just have a plan, uh, a plan in place of like how you're going to market your product or service. And, and also don't forget to build out a website too. That's, I guess that's more of my advice at this point, uh, build out a website yeah. as well. hundred percent. I mean, look, as a business, you're the first step, which can take months or years is to figure out product market fit. Do you have something that people want? And are you talking about it in such a way that people will buy from you? And usually for, for many entrepreneurs starting out, small businesses starting out, that looks like talking to people individually on a sort of like low volume scale. Right? You're going to do it with your friends and your family. You're going to talk to people at conferences, farmer's market, depending on sort of what you're selling. You, you're gonna, it'll be a lot of in-person and when you realize your in-person is working, then you can scale out to digital. Now, it's not all products are like that. There's some e-commerce things that you can do on exclusively online, but it's the same concept. You've got to find the pricing, the messages, the sort of packaging, the positioning, the way to talk about your business such that people buy from you. Once you figure that out, you, can, you should be spending money on social media, content posting, on advertising to amplify that message but you only want to amplify that message when you know you're amplifying the right message or a close enough message i understand completely i got advertisement sing on the locked on islanders podcast it was bad copy and and i learned that okay um, don't ask for their email right away. Have them come and listen to the podcast. Don't let them, you know, don't, don't go hard in the paint to begin. Um, so that yeah, was, a, that was a good lesson for me to learn earlier this year, but, um, but now I know just advertise, you know, the free sample. And then once they're, uh, hooked right. on my podcast, just have them come over to the sub stack and uh, enjoy the, the content there. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a calculated risk. It's, it's, it's iteration. It's really understanding the right mix that works for your business at this moment in time. Um, what if, so what if someone uh, failed and has to retry again, they, they were in either a bad market or they're, or they were just not selling to the right people. Uh, what do you suggest at that point failures are learnings uh i i prefer to characterize it as learnings um you know there's and and uh, and i also prefer to characterize it as iterate you know iterate is to do the same thing with a slightly different spin on it or something a different hook different positioning etc until you figure it out I mean, that's the goal. Like there's no silver bullet in any of this stuff. It's just like you have an intuition, you have a perspective and you need to understand if people also agree with your perspective in your thesis. And the faster you can have a feedback loop, the faster you will learn. And ideally you, you want to spend as little money as possible while you're learning. But you really want to understand if, if what you think is, if your thesis on the marketplace is actually accurate, and you'll you'll know that based on whether people buy or not. And if people aren't buying, change. 
change the colors, change the packaging, to change the pricing, change the product, change the manufacturing, change something and keep changing until you've got the right sort of like formula for your business. Of course, of course. Um, anything else you want to add uh, before I'm in this segment? Yeah, I mean, if uh, if anyone wants to reach out, um, our website is brillmedia.co, B as in boy, R-I-L-L media.co. If you want to talk to me, schedule a time, click on the contact us form at the top or button at the top. Uh, you'll be prompted to schedule a time with me and we'll talk about how to grow your business. Of course. And I guess I've got to put my plugs in now. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support this podcast, please uh, consider buying one of the audiobooks books uh, in the description or show notes. Um, you've got chess, the game for peace and prosperity, growing baseball and growing hockey. I am almost to 500 audiobooks. Help me get there by the end of this year. I need 65 more. We're almost there. I've got to get the, I want to see that, that 500 number. Like when Frank Thomas hit his 500th home run. Nice. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, and, and we'll get there too. Um, Also consider, also please rate this podcast five stars. If you think it's worth it, Uh, write a little review um share it with everyone so on both spotify google um apple wherever you're listening to your podcast um and anything else to add robert no i really appreciate your time adam and i'll i'll check out those books um okay i will be sure to put them in the show notes as well uh please send over your links and um and uh, that will do it for this episode of the Blue Oasis podcast. Take care.